by now, I'm sure that most of you have at least heard of Pastor Greg Locke. This is an individual who has greatest hits such as Autism Isn't Real, It's Actually Demonic Possession. He is a COVID truther, an anti-vaxxer. This is somebody who is clearly insane, even compared to other pastors. But um, he is going to expose some witches who have apparently infiltrated his church. And the rant that he goes on here is just it is great. Uh, so let's listen. We got first and last names of six witches that are in our church. And you know what's strange? Three of you are in this room right now. He's about to do a mic drop. <laughs> he's, he's just visualizing them shocked. Oh my God, he found out about us. Oh my God. If they are witches, if he believes that human beings have magical powers, isn't he worried that they're going to curse him? He's talking shit about the witches. Does he honestly think that the power of uh, his magic and his god is superior to the witches? Because perhaps they have magic that, you know, is uh, more stronger than his. So, you know, he's asking for a battle that he may not be equipped to uh, to win. <laughs> Three of you in the room right now. Three of you in the room right now. Jesus Christ. He's just, he's so confident. And he's just like, he, he knows he's owning them right now. What a weirdo. You better look in my eyeballs. We ain't afraid of you, you stinking witch. You devil worshiping Satanist witch. We cast you out in the name of Jesus Christ. We break your spells. We break your curse. We got your first name. We got your... Okay, so he's casting them out. So presumably that's the magic of Christ that he's using right there in that moment. So was there anyone in the crowd that was like... Because <laughs> if nobody is at that moment being cast out physically from the church, his spell has failed. I mean, somebody has got to start fucking like crawling on the ceiling or... Um, or hissing, otherwise his spell is ineffective. We even got an address for one of you. You so much as cough wrong. So he's gonna dox the witches. Expose you in front of everybody in this tent, you stinking witch. You were sent to this church to destroy us. You were sent to this church to lure us in. You were sent to this church to cast spell. Listen, some of you been sick because you befriended that witch. Two of you in my wife's lady. That's COVID, sweetie. <laughs> All of you are probably huddled around, not wearing fucking masks, not vaccinated. So that's that's COVID. Bible study, and you know who you are, and we're going to ask you to get out, or I'll expose you in front of everybody. I'm sure that the witches will leave on their own volition just because your voice is so insufferable, just screaming at the top of your lungs like a fucking lunatic. We got all six of their names. All six of them. All six of them. Two of them had already been confirmed before that thing ever even said it. Three of them uh, are the witches from Hocus Pocus. That's the ones that he got the name of. That's the, one of them he has the address of. First and last night, this chick is new to our church and don't know none of you. So you got a choice. Imagine being a newcomer to his church and this person gets accused of being a witch probably because she said something wrong or offended him or his wife or something. How welcoming isn't the goal to welcome people? And he's sitting here calling people who are or a woman in particular who's a newcomer, a witch. I mean, he probably he probably lost her at that point, right? You can leave with your spells all by yourself. <laughs> or I'll show up next Sunday with a stage full of brooms and I'll give you one and I'll fly your tail up out of this place in the name of Jesus, but we ain't playing your spell casting, witchcraft, nonsense, sage burning games. <laughs> Everybody okay? <laughs> the witches are like, nope. Oh, you're owning them. Hey, witches, guess what? If you don't leave this fucking church, I'm bringing a broom. Gotcha. <laughs> Balthazar, thank you so much for the uh, tier one sub. I really appreciate that. Uh, I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening with this video. This dude is uh, a little out there. He's off his rocker. Look at that face. I'm sorry, but if you give me the option of befriending a, a witch 
or this nutbag, I'm going with the witches every time. Now, if this wasn't enough, we got some really uh, bad news from the Catholic Church. So apparently, um, a lot of the spells that they've been using, or that one priest in particular has been using to save the souls of people, has been invalid. He's been using the wrong fucking spell, like a dipshit. So baptisms by Arizona priests presumed invalid due to error. So they're going to get to heaven, and then... Um, the person who's like manning the booth to enter is going to be like, mm, they didn't use the correct spell when you were baptized. So then they're going to pull the lever and then these folks are going to go to hell because they're invalid, right? So uh, the priest was beloved by his parishioners. Yet for years, he made a one word ritual mistake repeatedly that has caused confusion and anxiety for thousands of Catholics in the Phoenix area. Now worrying that they were improperly baptized. Under scrutiny are baptisms performed by the Rev. Andres Orango, who served in Arizona for 16 years. Catholic officials estimate that thousands of baptisms are now presumed to be invalid because he used incorrect wording, and they say those affected may need to be rebaptized. Some may feel obliged to have other church ceremonies performed again, even including marriage. Wow. So what's the error here? Really, it's simple. Arango's error was saying, we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Uh, when he should have begun the sentence by saying, I baptize you. Ah, the one word. Imagine going to hell on a technicality. That would be so horrible. The difference is theologically crucial, the Vatican ruled in 2020, because it's not the we of the congregation. Doing the baptizing, but the I of Jesus Christ working through the priest but hang on a second couldn't he say no it's we because um it's the father the son and the holy spirit that's the we that i'm referring to yes we is one but i you know it implies all three of them right i mean so yeah i wonder hildebeest that's a good question are these people going to get refunds i mean it's got to be really really upsetting right to get baptized and realize fuck i'm going to go to hell anyway this dipshit was using the wrong fucking spell. Wrong spell, idiot. It's I, not we, you fucking moron. So how many of these were, were fucked up? You know, believe it or not, when I was a kid, I think I was like 13 years old, I got baptized. I wonder if my pastor fucked up because I could very well go to hell. I mean, shit. Who knows, right? The Trinity is still one person. But I mean, if you... um. If you're referring to, like, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, he couldn't he have plausible deniability for saying that? Like, no, no, I say we, meaning the three, which is the one, but it's three. <laughs> could it, I mean, couldn't he? Religion is, I, I just don't, I, I don't get it, right? Because, look, we, we looked at uh, Greg Locke, right? And this is, like, one extreme end. But then on the more, uh, you know, I guess, quote-unquote, normal end, you get shit like this, where it's like, oh, no, the baptisms that we did were invalid because somebody misspoke. What? All religion is so bizarre to me. It's so bizarre to me. How is how how in 2022 are people still subscribing to organized religion? And let me just preface this conversation, or I should say at the caveat, not preface it, by saying that if you are religious and it genuinely gives you comfort and happiness, great. Uh, if you're Episcopal, they're they're just they're they're chill. They're cool. Episcopalians, from my understanding, are just chill. When I was in school, I talked to somebody who was an atheist but still went to an Episcopalian church on the weekends just because she thought that you know they were really nice people and she just wanted to make friends. Um, so they're much more open-minded and welcoming to you know LGBTQ plus people and whatnot. So I have no problem with people if their religion isn't bringing out the worst in them. But if people are letting it rule their lives like this, where you genuinely believe that you're going to go to hell because the priest who baptized you misspoke. That's when I think it's really, it's really damaging, right? Like when I was a kid, my uh, evangelical beliefs, it, it ruined my childhood. Like I was uh, led to believe that just for playing video games, I would go to hell. Every single fucking thing that I liked was bad. Pokemon cards were evil. So I had to get rid of all of that. Uh, even Mario Brothers, something as benign and innocent as that, uh, according to my church, was evil because there were ghosts in it. And that kind of uh, contradicts what the church teaches. We don't become ghosts when we die. We go to heaven or hell. So I had to get rid of Mario Brothers. And, and I couldn't have anything as a kid. Like, my, my, my life was so... Um, 
so uh, fucked up because of religion. I couldn't enjoy just the same shit that my friends were enjoying. So I think religion is extremely damaging, and this really proves it. Uh, again, if you are a religious person who doesn't really subscribe to these major religions or you don't have these cuckoo beliefs, then more power to you. I think that that's fine. But a lot of this is just so fucked up. You know, like how many people are going to actually have literal panic attacks because they were baptized by this guy and they think that now they're not going to get into heaven. Newsflash, heaven doesn't exist. If you're if you're curious, like what's going to happen when we die? The same thing that happened when uh, we were not born. Nothing. We, we just won't be here. We will cease to exist. It's really that simple. We don't have to overcomplicate it. I get that psychologically it gives us some comfort to think that maybe God is real and maybe there's a heaven and an afterlife. But that actually doesn't give me comfort. Because really what that does is it makes this life currently much less valuable. But when you realize that this is it, there's no afterlife, this is all we get, it adds a lot more value to this life. Because this is it. We've got to make the most of it. We've got to fight for right now, not what's going to happen when we die or what might happen when we die. That's my opinion anyways. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.